See if's been emptied. Jewelry's gone, and some paintings. Then he nodded. Victims' names. The house belongs to Andrew Jakes. Jakes. The name was familiar. Has an art dealer. And the girl? Angela Jakes. His daughter. The cop left. Granddaughter. No, sir. She's his wife. Stupid, thought Danny. Of course she's his wife. This is Hollywood, after all. Old man Jakes must have been worth a fortune. At last the ropes gave way. Till death us do part, thought Danny as Angela Jakes literally tumbled free from her husband's corpse into his arms. Slipping off his overcoat, Danny draped it over her shoulders, covering her nakedness. She was conscious again and shivering. It's all right, he told her. You're safe now. Angela, isn't it? The girl nodded mutely. Can you tell me what happened, sweetheart? She looked up at him and for the first time Danny saw the full extent of her injuries. Two black eyes, one so swollen that it had closed completely, and lacerations all over her upper body. Scratch marks. Danny thought, she must have fought like hell. He hurt me. Her voice was barely a whisper. The effort of speaking seemed to exhaust her. Take your time. She paused. Then he waited. He said he would let Andrew go if, if I. Catching sight of her husband's bloodied corpse, she broke into uncontrollable sobs. Someone cover him up for Christ's sake, then he snapped. How was he supposed to get any sense out of the girl with that horror show lying right next to her? We can't, sir. Not yet. Forensics isn't finished with the body. Denny flashed his sergeant a withering look. I said cover him. The sergeant blanched. Sir. A blanket was draped over Andrew Yaka's body, but it was too late. His wife was already in deep shock, rocking back and forth, eyes glazed, muttering to herself. Denny wasn't sure what she was saying. It sounded like, I have, no life. Is the ambulance here yet? Yes, sir. Just arrived. Good. Detective Danny McGuire moved away out of the victim's earshot, beckoning his men around him in a tight huddle. She needs a doctor and a psych evaluation. Officer Menendez, you go with her. Make sure the medical examiner sees her first and we get a full rape kit, swaps, blood tests, the lot. Of course, sir. Tomorrow, Detective Danny McGuire would question Angela Jakes properly. She was in no fit state tonight. You'd better take the mate with you while you're at it, he added. He can't hear myself think with her wailing in my ear. A skinny, blond young man with horn-rimmed glasses walked into the room. Sorry I'm late, sir. Detective David Henning might be a card-carrying nerd, but he had one of the best, most logical, deductive brains on the force. Detective Denny McGuire was delighted to see him. Ah, Henning. Good. Call the insurers, get me an inventory of everything that was taken. Then check out the pawn shops and websites, see what shows up. Henning nodded. And someone get on to the security provider. A house like this must be alarmed up the Vatso, but it looks like our killer just strolled on in here tonight. Officer Menendez Said, the mate mentioned that she heard a loud bang of some sort around 8 p.m. a gunshot? No. I asked her that, but she said it was more like a piece of furniture falling over. She was on her way upstairs to check it out, but Mrs. Jake stopped her, so it she'd go up herself. Then what? Then nothing. The mate went upstairs at 8.45 p.m. to bring the old man his cocoa as usual. That's when she found them and called 900 after his cocoa. Danny McGuire tried to visualize the Yakeza's married life. He pictured a rich, lecherous old man easing his arthritic limbs into bed each night beside his little, sexy young bride, then waiting for his maid to bring him a nice cup of cocoa. How could Angela Jakes have borne a being part by such a decrepit creature? Danny imagined the old man's bony, liver-spotted fingers stroking Angela's breasts, hair thighs. It was irrational, but the thought made him angry. Did it make somebody else angry too? Danny wondered. Angry enough to kill. Early the next morning, Detective Danny McGuire drove to Cedar Sinai Medical Center. He felt excited. This was his first big murder case. The victim, Andrew Jakes, was a sign of Beverly Hills High Society. A case like this could propel Danny's career into the fast lane if he played his cards right. But it wasn't just his career prospects that Danny was excited about. 
It was the prospect of seeing Angela Jakes again. There was something uniquely compelling about the young Mrs. Jakes, something beyond her beauty and that violated, Madafosek's body that had haunted Denny's dreams last night. All the circumstantial evidence suggested that the girl was a shameless gold digger. But, Denny found himself hoping that she wasn't. That there was some other explanation for her marriage to a man old enough to be her grandfather. Denny Maguire loathed gold diggers. He did not want to have to loathe Angela Jakes. How's the patient? The duty nurse outside Angela Yaka's private room eyed Denny suspiciously. Who's asking? Denny flashed her his badge and most winning Irish smile. Oh. Good morning, detective. The nurse returned his smile, surreptitiously checking his left hand for a wedding band. For a cop he was unusually attractive, strong jaw, lapis blue eyes and armor of thick black Celtic curls that her own boyfriend would have killed for. The patient's tired. How tired? Can I question her? You can question me thought the nurse, admiring Denny's boxer's physique beneath his plain white Brooks brother shirt. You can see here as long as you take it easy. She's had some morphine for the pain in her face. Here, left cheekbone was fractured and one of her eyes is quite badly damaged. But she's lucid. Thank you, said Denny. I'll be as quick as I can. For a hospital room, it was luxurious. Tasteful oil paintings hung on the walls. A Wesley Barrel upholstered chair stood in the corner for visitors, and a delicate potted orchid quivered by the window. Angela Jakes was propped up against two down pillows. The bruises around her eyes had faded from last night's uniform plume to a dark rainbow of colors. Fresh stitches across her forehead gave her the disconcerting look of a dressmaker's dummy, but still she remained quite astonishingly beautiful, alluring in a way that Denny could not remember ever encountering before. Hello, Mrs. Jakes. He held up his badge again. Detective McGuire. I'm not sure if you remember. We met last night. Angela Jakes smiled weakly. Of course I remember you, detective. You gave me your coat. Lyle, this is the policeman I was telling you about. Danny spun around. Standing stock still against the wall behind him was probably the most handsome man Danny had ever seen this side of a movie screen. Tall and olive-skinned, with the perfect, Achillina features of a hunter, jet black hair and blue eyes, flat and almond-shaped like a Siamese cat's, he scowled at Danny disapprovingly. He was wearing an expensively tailored suit, and when he moved it was like watching oil spread across a lake, smooth and fluid, almost viscous. Danny placed him instantly. Lawyer. His upper lip curled. With a few honorable exceptions, Detective Danny McGuire was not a fan of lawyers. Who are you and what are you doing here? Mrs. Jakes is not supposed to have any visitors. Lyle Renalto. The man's voice was practically a purr. Walking over to Angela Yaka's bedside, he placed a proprietary hand over hers. I'm a family friend. Then he looked at the two preposterously attractive young people holding hands and drew the inevitable conclusion. Yeah, right. And I'm the queen of Sheba. Family friend, Myers. Lyle was Andrew's attorney, Zaid Angela. Her voice was low and husky, nothing like the frightened whisper of last night. Conchita called him last night to let him know what happened and he came straight here. She squeezed Lyle Renalto's hand gratefully, her eyes welling with tears. Has been amazing. I'll bet he has. If you're up to it, Mrs. Jakes, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Lyle Renalto Zaid curtly, not now. Mrs. Jakes is too tired. If you submit your questions to me, I'll see that she answers them once she's rested. Then he instantly bridled. I don't believe I was talking to you, Mr. Renato. Be that as it may, Mrs. Jakes has just been through an indescribably harrowing ordeal. I know. I'm trying to catch the guy who did it. Quite apart from witnessing her husband's murder, she was violently raped. Then he was losing patience. I'm aware of what happened, Mr. Renato. I was there. He didn't witness Andrew's murder. Both men turned to look at Angela, but her attention was focused wholly on Danny. Feeling a ridiculous sense of triumph, he moved toward her bedside, edging Renato aside. Would you like to tell me what you did witness? Angel, you don't have to say anything, the attorney butted in. Danny raised an eyebrow at the endearment. Angel was my husband's pet name for me, Mrs. Jakes explained. All his friends used to call me that. Not that I am an angel, by any means. 
She smiled weakly. I'm sure I could be quite a trial to poor Andrew at times. I highly doubt that, said Danny. You were telling me about last night. About what happened. Yes. Andrew was upstairs in bed. I was downstairs reading. What time was this? She considered. About eight, I suppose. I heard a noise from upstairs. What sort of noise? Ah, bump. I thought Andrew might have fallen out of bed. Had been having these spells recently. Anyway, Conchita came running in, she'd heard the noise too, but I said I'd go up. Andrew was a proud man, detective. If he were. She searched around for the appropriate word. If he were incapacitated in any way, he wouldn't have wanted Conchita to find him. Had have wanted me. So you went up alone? She inhaled deeply and closed her eyes bracing against the memory. Lyle Renato stepped forward. Angel, please. There's no need to upset yourself. It's all right, Lyle, really. The detective needs to know. She turned back to Danny. I went up alone. As I was walking into the bedroom someone hit me from behind. That's the last thing I remember, the pain in my head. When I woke up he was, he was raping me. Can you describe the man? Asked Danny. He knew from experience that the best way to come emotional witnesses was to stick to the hard facts. Once you started with all the I know this must be distressing for you bullshit, the floodgates opened and you'd lose them. Angela Jakes shook her head. I wish I could. But he wore a mask, a balaclava. What about his build? Most of the time he was behind me. I don't know. Stocky, he guess. Not tall, but he was certainly strong. He fought, and he hit me. He said if I didn't let him keep doing it, he would hurt Andrew. So I stopped fighting. Tears streamed down her swollen cheeks. Where was your husband at this time? Did he try to help you? To raise the alarm. He? A look of confusion came over her face. She glanced at Lyle Renato, but he looked away. I don't know where Andrew was. He didn't see him. On the bed, maybe. I don't know. It's all right, said Danny, sensing her anxiety levels rising. Go on. You stopped fighting. Yes. He asked me for the combination of our safe and I gave it to him. Then he raped me, again. When had finished, he knocked me out a second time. When I came to. The first thing I remember is you, detective. She looked Danny in the eye and he felt his stomach lurch, promptly forgetting his next question. Lyle Renato smoothly took advantage of the silence. Conchita, the Yakeza's housekeeper, told me that all Angela's jewelry was taken and a number of valuable miniatures. Is that correct? Before Danny could respond that he wasn't in the habit of leaking sensitive information about a murder inquiry to family friends, Angela blurted out angrily, I don't care about the damn jewelry. Andrew's dead. I left my husband, detective. I'm sure you did, Mrs. Jakes. Please find the animal who did this. Then he cast his mind back to last night's crime scene, the blood-soaked floor, the old man's Albert severed head, the disgusting, obscene scratches on Angela Yakas' thighs, buttocks and breasts. Animal was the right word. There was no sign of the pretty Norsa outside Angela Yakas' room. As Danny stood waiting for the elevator, Lyle Renato oiled up to him. You don't have a very high opinion of attorneys, do you, detective? The lawyer's tone had switched from hostile to ingratiating. Danny preferred hostile. Nevertheless, it was an unusually perceptive comment. What makes you think that, Mr. Renato? Lyle smiled. Your face. Unless, of course, it's just me, personally, whom you dislike. Danny said nothing. Lyle went on. You're not alone, you know. My father hated lawyers with a passion. He was crushingly disappointed when I graduated law school. I come from a seafaring family, you see. As far as Pa was concerned, it was the United States Naval Academy or nothing. Danny thought, why is he telling me this? The elevator arrived. Danny stepped inside and pressed the but Lyle took an arm out to hold the doors. His film star features hardened and his cat's eyes flashed in warning. Angela Jakes is a close friend of mine. I won't have you hounding here. Then he lost his temper. This is a murder inquiry, Mr. Renato, not a game of twenty questions. Mrs. Jakes is my key witness. In fact right now, 
she and her maid are my only witnesses. Angela didn't see the men. She told you that already. Danny frowned. I thought Mr. Jakes was a close friend of yours too. I'd have thought you'd want us to find his killer. Of course I do, snapped Lyle. Or perhaps you weren't quite as close to Andrew Jakes as you were to his wife. Is that it? This seemed to amuse Lyle Rinaldo. For a detective, I must say you're a pretty poor judge of people. You think Angel and I are lovers? Are you? The attorney smirked. No. Denny desperately wanted to believe him. This is a triple felony, mister. Renato, he said, removing the attorney's arm from the elevator door. Rape, robbery and murder. He strongly suggests you do not attempt to obstruct my investigation by coming between me and the witness. Is that a threat, detective? Call it what you like, said Denny. Renato opened his mouth to respond but the elevator doors closed, denying him the last word. Judging from his twitching jaw and the look of frustration etched on his handsome face, this wasn't something that happened very often. Goodbye, Mr. Renato. Five minutes later, back on Wilshire Boulevard, Danny's cell phone rang. Henning. What have you got for me? Not much, sir, I'm afraid. Nothing in the pawn shops, nothing online. Danny frowned. It's still early days. Yes, sir. He also checked out Yakesville. Denny brightened. And? The wife gets everything. No other family. No charitable causes. How much is everything? After taxes, around four hundred million dollars. Denny whistled. Four hundred million dollars. That was quite a motive for murder. Not that Angela Jakes was a suspect. The poor woman could hardly have raped and beaten herself. Even so, Denny thought back to the words Angela had murmured repeatedly to herself last night, I have no life. With 400 million in the bank, she certainly had a life now. Any life she wanted. Anything else? He asked his sergeant. Just one thing. The jewelry. A little over a million bucks worth was taken from the safe and Mrs. Yakas jewelry box. Denny waited for the punchline. And. None of it was insured. Seven figures worth of diamonds, and you don't add it to your homeowner's policy. Seems strange, don't you think? It did seem strange. But Denny's mind wasn't focused on Andrew Yakas' insurance oversights. Listen, he said, I want you to run a check for me on a guy named Lyle Renato. A-N-I-L-T-O. Says he was old man Yakas' lawyer. Sure, said Detective Henning. What am I looking for, exactly? Detective Denny Maguire said honestly, that's the problem. I have no idea.